Hello everyone and welcome in to another edition of Cardinals Weekly. I'm Ahmad Hicks. And I'm Corey Miller. Now Ahmad, the Cardinals are off the road, they're back home. Not the greatest road trip in the world and uh, some tough customers may be coming up. We'll break it all down on this week's episode of Cardinals Weekly, but first we'll lead off with our new segment, Leading Off. So the first thing is first, Jack Flaherty. This is a guy that started the year undefeated, 8-0. Then he got roughed up in Chicago against the White Sox, gave up a couple of earned runs. The team got seven against him, well, seven non-earned runs. But then he followed that up in his hometown against the Dodgers, a dominant performance, nine strikeouts in five innings, and then he gets hurt. He gets hurt swinging the bat, which is just the worst thing you can think of. And every time that happens, uh, I'm a pretty traditional guy but every time a pitcher gets hurt batting it makes me think of the dh and wanting yeah. the dh in the nl because man this is just tough to see a guy who was cruising all year long and now who knows when we're going to see him next those oblique strains can be tough especially for a pitcher so and they did the cardinals didn't exactly mince words about it either. no they didn't man. you know yeah a lot of times they'll say Oh, 10-day IL, exactly. not going to be that bad. And then that guy's usually out forever. This time, they, they came right out and said it was going to be bad, yeah. and he's going to miss significant time. So what happens, Corey? Because he had a 2.90 ERA, 20, uh, 67 Ks, and only 20 earned runs in a matter of 62 innings. Who's the next man up? Well, they're in big trouble. Yeah, uh, they're they already are. this year without Dakota Hudson, who we haven't talked about all year Tommy because Don. they knew they were going to be without him, but they thought they had enough to overcome that. Austin Gomber is in the Nolan Arenado trade. Obviously, you still make that deal 100 yeah, times out of 100. For sure. But he's not there for depth. You haven't really liked what you've seen from Ponce. No. Uh, Miles Michaelis came back for five innings, looked good. Now and he's now, gone for 60 days. Yeah, now he's <laughs> – I'm very concerned about him pitching again this yeah. year. Um, it's kind of a mess. Carlos Martinez, you never know what you're going to get from him. Ten earned runs in the first inning the other day versus either, the Either, you know – they're going to have to either make some changes to their 40-man roster and take some chances on some young guys, which I don't think they're ready to do, no. especially with Libertor. Um, I don't think we see him this year. No, and you know what? President of Baseball Ops, John Mozeliak, uh, he got questioned about that earlier today as we're recording this on Thursday afternoon, and he said that he was not going to rush the progression of Zach Thompson yeah. or Matthew Libertor just to fill a temporary void. So it does not look like we'll be seeing those guys in the majors. I, we're gonna, Johan Oviedo's going to get some major innings right now, it looks like, and they're going to hope and pray that John Gantz still somehow is able to work his way out of every single game he's in, looking like it's going to be terrible and somehow being a magician to get out of it. But they got to start looking on the trade market if they want to yeah. be competitive the rest of this year, I think. I'll be blunt. They need to make, a, they need to make a, a move right now because if they don't, this team is not going to make it past the NL wild card. Uh, so who should they bring in? Well, I mean, obviously – the, the rumors are going to start <laughs> heating up here. Not the rumors, but the clamor from fans to go and get Max Scherzer from Washington sure. because it makes too much sense. Uh, everybody's wanted him here for a while. Yeah. If the Cardinals could have a redo, uh, even though he got a huge contract from the yeah. Nationals, He's paid it off. I think the Cardinals go back and offer him that same thing, and I think he would have come here. Yeah, the Rockies a few gave years us ago. a little extra money, so they should be good to go. <laughs> I mean, and if we're just talking about Max Scherzer, this is a team. The Nationals are 23 and 30. They're not looking like a team that's going to win another World Series. He's four and four, but has a 2.34 earned run average, and get this, 95 strikeouts. Things, that's a lot. Things keep getting worse for the Nationals. Patrick Corbin hasn't looked good. Steven Strasburg is hurt again. Yeah. And I would be very worried about him. I don't think they're quite at the ledge yet where they're going to just straight up so, give up. Yeah. Uh, because we saw what they did. I'm sure they're thinking about 2019 when they were terrible and then turned it on. Had a, had a St. Louis Blues kind of-ish uh, run and turned the switch and went up and won a championship. So I don't think they're quite on the, on the ledge yet. But they're last in the NL East. And I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah. And Scherzer's going to be out there if they're smart because exactly. uh, get what you can while before he becomes a free agent. And it's love to live in fantasy, fantasy land like we are right now, but we have to bring it back to reality. This just means more work for the former Cardinals ace, Adam Wainwright. How does he pick up this slack and motivate the rest of the guys? I mean, he, you shouldn't have to count on your oldest pitcher in the <laughs> National League to, to carry the load, but I mean, he's going to be looked to as the ace now, especially with Flaherty out, and he's going to have to eat up innings to uh, to make sure that bullpen doesn't get overtaxed like we've seen it done so often so far this year. Uh, those three guys at yeah. the back <laughs> just getting overloaded. 
Adam Wainwright's going to have to go deeper into games, and he knows it, and he usually steps up to the plate, so I wouldn't put him past him, but uh, he's going to turn 40 here soon, so it's only going to get harder. Well, uh, helping Wayno kind of combat these issues that the Cardinals are having right now is their play from Tyler O'Neill. This guy is on a power surge, I mean literally from his biceps, but he's <laughs> doing some unreal things. He is. Uh, I mean, I just wrote something on him on Wednesday before they played their – their last game against the Dodgers. Okay, get this. Advanced. We're going to go advanced stats uh -oh. here. So not too – it's easy to understand. Tyler Neal's in the 100th percentile in barrel percentage. So, like, as good as you can get in the major leagues at wow. making contact, right, how you want to make contact – for the right exit velocity and launch angle. Tyler O'Neill is the best at that. Mm. He's in the 99th percentile in sprint speed. Wow. So he's he also, is fast. He's one of the fastest and strongest guys in the major leagues, and they're both coming together here. He's in the 94th percentile in average exit velo, so he's hitting the ball harder than almost anybody, and he's in the 99th in expected slugging. So when he hits the ball, it's, it's probably going to go for extra bases. So since coming back from that finger injury, 393 average, 1.321 OPS, slugging 929, four homers, three doubles, stolen base. That ninth inning um, against the Dodgers. When he came around. Really, and said, so he, he pretty much won the game yeah, for he them. Mm -hmm. he showed, that was kind of a good microcosm of what he can do. He hit a 108-mile-per-hour single up the middle. Mm -hmm. Then he stole second base. Yep to get in scoring position, scores in Edmundo Sosa single. Flying around. He wouldn't have scored if he wouldn't have stole that base. Yeah. Gets all bloodied up and gnarly. Mm -hmm. Then he makes the game-winning catch in the corner on a ball that uh, the analytics didn't say was that hard to catch, but if you watch that in real life, <laughs> that, that was tough. He made it look easy. That was if that was another couple feet, He's ended up in the stands or <laughs> into if, the wall. If he wasn't that fast, that's a walk-off win for the Dodgers. Yep. So, yeah, this is a – He's been a blessing in a disguise for the Cardinals this season. Uh, if he stays healthy, I think that's a good problem. I mean, a, a good thing to have, especially with um, Harrison Bader being on the IL right now. Dylan Carlson has also looked good as well the past couple of games. Ten some powers, runs, come, so. powers come back for, for Carlson. But, yeah, O'Neal, we've been waiting for this because you just look at the guy and you're like, oh, my God. He should be hitting This guy's going to be awesome. <laughs> but he's never really got an extended chance. Yeah. It feels like he's been here forever, mm -hmm. but he hasn't gotten the range to just go and do his thing. Now he is in uh, the power, speed, and defense all showing up big time. We should be all buying in on Tyler O'Neill right now. Definitely. All. How about playing against the big boys? Corey? Yeah. So we've seen the Cardinals beat up on some of those smaller teams, but when it comes to the high-level competition, just 8-15 and 15 against the Dodgers, White Sox, Cubs, Padres, Brewers, Mets so far, those are all teams that are going to be in the yep. playoffs. So what does this say about the Cardinals? Well, coming into this year, we kind of thinking – they can play 500 against the really good teams and right. then just destroy the bad teams like the Pirates and the Rockies and, and the, the Diamondbacks, Reds, yeah. which they've done so far. Mm -hmm. They've done that, but they haven't competed as much against the bigger teams, which is going to be a problem eventually. 8-15 and 15 not is good. not good enough against those teams, and a lot of these games no. haven't been competitive. No. Uh, I'll be interested in the Cubs series. Those they are the ones. that around. Those are the ones yeah. that I'm most interested in because – uh, it's going to be Cubs, Cardinals, Brewers down it the is. stretch, and I don't trust the Brewers lineup at all. Uh, their rotation is really good. Uh, the Cubs, uh, I think, are, are they're always competitive. The front office might not want to go for it, yeah. But I think these players have too much pride. And they're like, this yeah. might be our last year. Everybody's together. We're all in. So the Cubs are going to be a thorn in the side. They definitely got to play better against them. I mean, that's a team that's going to bring it every single game. I think they could be 15 and 45, and they'll still give the Cardinals a run for their money. It's a rivalry game, so the Cardinals will have to live up to the expectations, especially in the Central. The Pirates, they haven't lost to this season. They don't need to lose to them. The Reds, <laughs> they need to beat up on them every time because of what Castellanos in their stadium just did by putting that picture yeah, you up see outside. That? Yeah, it's crazy. But I don't get – okay. And then they got spanked that day. It's so, it's so <laughs> dumb. You know, they're – I mean, Castellanos is playing amazing. He he's, is. he's been one of the best hitters in the National League. But the Reds haven't won more than two games in a row since that opening weekend, I don't believe. So, I mean, what, what do you – you put up, put up the banner of him yelling at a rookie Jake Woodford for over nothing that he got suspended for. I don't know. The Reds are just a bunch of talk because uh, they haven't backed it up so far. It's their only uh, positive yeah. season so far besides Castellanos. How about looking ahead? Four games against the Reds starting yep. tonight. What do you think? Uh, well, they got, I mean, like we just talked about, if they're going to play that bad against the, the big boys like the Dodgers and the White Sox, well, they're not going to play the, uh, no, they're not going to play the White Sox anymore. The Mets, uh, the Padres and stuff like that, 
they got to beat up on the teams in their division that they have yeah. a lot of games against, like the Pirates and Reds. Mm-hmm. And the Reds are not the Pirates. The Reds are better than the Pirates. Yeah. But four-game series, I think uh, people would be feeling a lot better if you hit, go four. win four yeah. go win four in a row here, and uh, that would get the taste of the Dodgers series out of people's mouths. I think, else? I, think oh, Wayne, I think Wayne will have a big night. I think he's going seven innings plus, you know, a couple strikeouts, and he'll will this team to victory. That would, that would be big, yeah. uh, especially to save that bullpen. They also got Cleveland coming up this next week. Cleveland's an interesting team. Everybody thinks they're out, but they usually pull uh, a random pitcher or two out of their hat every year that turns into a great pitcher. So Cleveland's tough. Let's talk about, before we get to our next segment, uh-huh. uh, we had some news. We're recording this on what's Thursday. Thursday yep. Andrew Miller's back, but Tyler Webb DFA'd. Might be the end of the Tyler Webb era Probably. in St. Louis. Probably. Uh, Webb had an ERA over 13 this year and became the, the new punching bag for uh, Cardinals Twitter so far this year. It's a year. kind way to put it. And Brett Cecil wasn't around, so somebody had to fill that <laughs> role. Webb walked 19 guys in 16 innings, yes. and I think they would have made this move sooner uh, if they had the, depth. the pieces yeah. to make it happen, but they were just kind of hanging in there with him. So, uh, yeah, Andrew Miller back. Hopefully it's the Andrew Miller Hopefully it's the good Andrew Miller. The Andrew Miller that we saw in the World Series versus the Cubs. That's yeah, the Andrew that's, Miller that I want. I don't know if that Andrew Miller's ever coming back. And we haven't really so seen him with the Cardinals like we were hoping to, but uh, it, it won't take much to be better than Tyler Webb, I'll say that. Though. That's for sure, but I still think it's a tough situation for anybody in that bullpen to come in uh, right now with all the starters going down and you know the fluctuation in their schedules and stuff like that. It's just it's a tough ask for anybody back there right now. For sure. I, Giovanni Gallegos' arm, I think, is going to fall off at the end of this year. But hopefully... Keep in mind, we're not even halfway through Hopefully the, the starters start going deeper and uh, they can save those big three. Yeah. All right, now let's go to our red hot seat. We're not going to be too in-depth debating no. this week because nah. we can agree on a lot of this stuff. Uh, on Thursday, MLB opened voting for the All-Star Game in Denver. And uh, we got some thoughts on who might be representing the Cardinals. And I know the fans do, too, because the fans make it happen after all. And with all the enthusiasm for the Cardinals this year, I think they're going to get a good showing in the fan vote. For sure. I think Nolan Arenado, a fan favorite here in St. Louis, 11 home runs, 36 runs batted in. I don't think he's a shoe in but I do think how – uh, heavily Cardinals Nation supports their guys. I think he gets in. I think that's one of my picks. I also think Alex Reyes, 16 saves. Only one guy has more saves than him, and that's the San Diego Padres uh, closer, Mark Melancon. So he has 17. Uh, Reyes has 16. Reyes has 40 strikeouts this year. He's looked like one of the best closers in baseball. Dominant. And then my final pick, I'm going out on a limb here, Tyler O'Neill. He has not played in that many games due to injuries, but if we look at what he's done this season, 12 home runs, 26 runs batted in, five stolen bases, and plenty of web jams out in left field. It's going to be interesting. Uh, outfield's always tough. It is. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's any chance O'Neal's going to be a starter. I don't no, think there's any chance at all. Um, but a reserve, though, maybe. I, there's a chance. Now, I've got – I think Molina and Reyes are the only shoe-ins. Okay. I, I'm really – uh, I'd mark that down, especially Molina with the even with the injuries. Yes, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a fan vote. Yeah, Buster Posey is having a better year than Yachty, so I think Buster Posey's going to get Wilson the fan Contreras. the fan nod. But Yachty's going to be in that top three. It's like a layered system. I don't know if they've always done this the last couple of years, but it's it's weird. I, I they. They vote, and then the top three, mm-hmm. they come out with those guys, and then you vote on the top three guys. Yeah, he's going to be in those top three. And then after that, it's coaches in the commissioner's office decision for the reserves. Yeah, he's getting one of those spots. He probably is, um, yeah. But this is one of the best offensive seasons he's had so far. And it's a, it's a Hall of Famer on one of his last years. I think Yachty's a pretty safe bet to make it there. Alex Reyes, if he's not there, um, I will be coming with a, a torch and pitchfork to Colorado like, myself. What do you guys think? And, and leading that charge because this guy's been one of the dirtiest pitchers in the entire league. He's yeah, had some filthy. walk trouble, uh, but like John Gant, uh, even better than John Gant, Reyes, Reyes has been able to get out of it because he's so nasty. So I think Reyes and Molina are, are the obvious choices. Nolan Arenado, I think, is going to make the third, uh, the third guy for the Cardinals. It just makes too much yeah. sense. They want stars there. Yeah. Uh, Arenado, if he goes hot, he might win the fan vote. Chris Bryant having a heck of a year. Listed as a third baseman, although he's been playing mostly outfield, I know, that's which is interesting weird to me, yeah. here. 
Uh, Bryant's definitely got the better numbers right now, and those Cubs fans will show up and vote for him. I saw people talking about that on Facebook and Twitter the other day, all the people talking about Chris Bryant this, Chris Bryant that. I'm like, let's see how long this lasts, okay? He's, he's having a good year, uh, but I think Nolan Arenado's going to be at the All-Star Game in Colorado just because that, that, know, that just seems right. And uh, if, we're, if we're being honest with you all, you watching at home right now, if you had to pick a third baseman, who are you picking, Arenado or Chris Bryant? I think most people go on Arenado. Exactly. And he's going to go on a hot streak here at some point yeah. and get back to at least close numbers. And Cardinals fans are just so excited about him. I wouldn't put it past Cardinals fans to vote him in as the starter no matter what. Especially if he homers June 14th, that opener where all the fans are back and they oh, get to give man. Matt Curtin call. Oh, that would these be fun. fans. Whew. Yeah, can't wait. I think, well, I was looking it up. The Cardinals, I believe, haven't had more than two I think more than two. More than two All Stars since like 2015, so they haven't gotten a lot of uh, a lot of representation in the game. I don't know if that's from fan votes or or, or what it is, but uh, the Cardinals have not been that well represented for a while. So I think we get more than two this year, though. Yeah. I think I think we get at least three. Uh, Reyes Molina for sure, and then an Arenado and. Jack Flaherty would be there. He would be if a shoot if he wouldn't if he have didn't gotten get hurt. hurt. Yeah, so he'd be a shoot. And because he'd probably be starting too. That would be an interesting. Yeah. D- well, Jacob Degrom. Yeah. Is gonna, can't forget about that. Jacob, guy. Jacob Degrom He's is going to be the starter. He's unreal. The Cardinals should get him. That's who they should bring in. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is. Listen, amazing. the Mets have made a lot of dumb decisions in their history, <laughs> but that would definitely top it if they somehow. We're going to the World up. Series if we get him. <laughs> All right, we got a quick down on the farm update. The Cardinals just mm-hmm. announced their uh, minor league pitcher and position player of the month for May. Mm-hmm. It was Alec Burleson and Jake Walsh from Springfield taking the honors. A little bit about these guys so you get to know them because <laughs> it might be a little while since they're here and you probably never heard of them before because right. they're not Matthew Liberter, they're not Nolan Gorman. Exactly. They're not even one of the guys that was just drafted like a Jordan Walker, a Mason Wynn. Yeah. So uh, let's get to know them a little bit. Not the biggest names, like I said. Burleson, 22 years old, out of Eastern Carolina. He hit 317 in May at Double A and Single A. So he got called up halfway through. Seven homers, 19 RBIs in 21 games. He's Not an out, bad. He's an outfielder. Uh, they can maybe use him right now, uh, but he's still in Double A. <laughs> so they're going to give him time to progress. Although he is 25, so you know that clock starts to when you're 25 years old and still a prospect. That's not necessarily young anymore. No, so it's not. We'll see if he can make that move even further. Good, good year, or not good year, good month for him this week. Or <laughs> this month. I'm getting all my dates mixed up. <laughs> good month for him in May for the Cardinals <laughs> down in Springfield. And then we got Jake Walsh for their pitcher of the month. 25 years old also, or Burleson was 22, Walsh is 25. I'm getting my names, dates, it's everything, okay. everything's confused right. here. 1.29 ERA and nine relief appearances for Springfield. He's a 6'1 right-hander. Uh, former Cardinals reliever and all-star Pat Neshek. Yeah. If you remember, Pat Neshek comes down from the side there. Uh, liked him a lot. I did. He had high praise for Walsh. He said he watched him at rehab in 2019-2020 and on the field in Florida. Said he can't wait to see him in the show for the Cardinals. So that's some high praise uh, for a guy Cardinals fans might not have heard about. So And he's 25. So, so that time is ticking for heck, him. Yeah, heck, we might see him sooner rather than later if uh, the Cardinals keep having these these uh, arm problems. I'm telling you, if the things stay the way that they are now, we'll probably be seeing him in September, if not sooner. We got I, They'll have some interesting decisions to make with their 40-man roster, who they want to keep on there, uh, who they want to move around, if there's any trades and yep. stuff like that. Most said they're, they're, they're actively seeking trades right now. They are trying to get better. They said they're not looking at bringing in free agents who haven't played because that means they'll have to get big league ready. So he did hint at the fact that the Cardinals are trying to make improvements on their roster. We'll just have to wait and see. And maybe he's going to do it behind the scenes like he did with the Arenado deal and just shock us all. Hey, and if these two guys don't play for the Cardinals, maybe they could use them <laughs> to get somebody else. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching another episode of Cardinals Weekly. For Ahmad Hicks, I'm Corey Miller. We'll be at the ballpark on Saturday. Uh, Everybody, hopefully be watching. We're getting those uh, mystery IL jerseys of of whoever's on the – everybody's on the IL right now. But uh, we'll be there having a good time watching the Cardinals. Hope you guys are doing the same. See you next week.